utilizing the reformatting tool. To use the reformatting tool, you must first activate the tool in Preferences. Open Preferences and select the NPR icon. Choose your acquisition device. Then click Apply and OK. Now the reformatting tool will appear each time a volume is open. For more information on preferences, see the recorded class for setting preferences. The reformatting tool allows you to make the volume smaller, change the resolution, or correct patient positioning. The control points allow you to change the positions of the axial slice, the coronal slice, and the sagittal slice. The inner dots allow you to make angle adjustments. By selecting the cropping box, you can display only a portion of the volume or remove any unnecessary data. The resolution can be changed by choosing a different voxel size. You must give the volume a name to save the reformatted version of the volume. The window options at the bottom allow you to reset, which resets to the original, quit, which will close the volume completely, OK, which will open the volume in your new settings, or you can skip the reformatting tool altogether and go straight into the volume. You can always turn off the reformatting tool by deselecting the tool in Preferences. Creating a reconstructed panoramic image. To create a panoramic image, first open your volume in the Curve Slicing tab. Find your axial slice slider bar and align your axial view until you can see the full arch, including the teeth. This can be done on either the maxillary or the mandibular arch. Once your arch is in view, on the left side of your screen, activate the dental arch creation mode under the tools section. Note, a drop down arrow gives an option to have the software auto-create an arch. In the NPR preferences, you can choose to have the software automatically create an arch every time. Once you have selected the arch creation mode, in your axial view screen, you will start on the right side at the edge of the arch and you're gonna start with a series of single left clicks creating your arch. You're going to click about every one to two teeth until you have gotten to the other side of the arch. Once you have reached the other end, you will double left click to end your arch creation. Now on the right side of your screen, you will see your reconstructed panoramic image in the upper right, and in the lower right, you will see the oblique coronal view screen. You may also have heard this called the transaxial view. If your panoramic image doesn't look quite clear or like a panoramic that you're used to seeing, it is set in the native resolution that the image was taken in. In this case, it was 150 micrometers. I want to set this to about 20 millimeters, in this case, 19.9 millimeters. And there, we have created a reconstructed panoramic image from a 3D volume. Note, if your 3D volume did not capture the condyles, you will not see them on the reconstructed image.
tracing a nerve canal. In some instances, as a mandibular implant or a mandibular extraction, you may want to trace the nerve. To do so, open up your software in the Curve Slicing tab. This time you will align the axial slice slider bar with the mental foramen. Once you see the mental foramen openings in the upper left axial slice view, you are ready to trace the arch. Under your tools, you will activate dental arch creation mode. Again, single left clicks all the way around the arch, double left click at the end. Once you have traced your arch, you will now see the reconstructed pan in the upper right and the oblique coronal view screen in the lower right. In your adjustments tools, select the region of interest and we'll remove the maxillary teeth as we do not need them right now. Now you have a bigger view of the mandible. In your reconstructed panoramic view, slide your blue handlebar to the opening of the mental foramen. You should see the opening of that foramen appear on the lower right screen. Once you see the opening, you're ready to trace your nerve. In your tools, you'll activate the nerve canal tool. We'll start the trace in the lower right view. Again, we'll do single left clicks in the lower right. And now without clicking, we're going to continue to trace the nerve in the reconstructed pan view. Double left click when you are finished. If you want to verify that you have traced the nerve correctly, slide your oblique coronal handlebar along the orange control points in the reconstructed pan and verify in the lower right screen that the control points are in the nerve canal as they should be. If they are not, you can grab the center circle and simply move it over. And now your options for your nerve canal include show or hide the nerve canal, change the color, change the diameter. The default is 2.5 millimeters. If you are not pleased with your nerve trace, you can delete it by clicking on the trash can. Performing measurements. To perform a measurement, activate the measurement mode in your tools. To start the measurement, single left click where you want to start and single left click at the end. The drop down arrow under your measurement gives you options for multiple measurements multiple measurements without having to reactivate the measurement tool, as well as a polyline measurement. When measuring a polyline measurement, you will do several measurements with single left clicks and double left click when you are finished. There is also an option to do multi polylines. Activate the angle mode if you need to do an angled measurement. Single left click where you want to start and single left click when you are done. At any point in time, you can move your measurements around by grabbing any of the control points. The options for your measurement include show or hide the measurement, change the color, or delete the measurements. Placing an implant. To place an implant, Open up the Curve Slicing tab. 
First, align your oblique coronal slider tab in the position you want to place the implant. The inner beads move the line at an angle. Once you are positioned, you can activate the implant placement tool. If you have not already added to your implant library, you will be prompted to do so the first time you activate the implant placement tool. For more information on your implant library, see the recorded class on managing the implant library. There is no need to do a measurement prior to activating the implant placement tool. Once it is activated, single left click where the implant will start and single left click where the implant will end. The software will automatically generate a recommended implant. Select OK. The implant has three control beads. The beads on the top and bottom move the implant at an angle. The bead in the center moves the implant from side to side and up and down. The options for the implant include show or hide the implant, show or hide the object properties, change the color of the implant, delete the implant, and center on the implant. Centering on the implant aligns all three MPR views on the implant. 